What's up everybody, it's Jay here. I'm filming in a new spot in my house because that's a really nice colour. And today I'm going to be talking about LGBT history in Ireland. Personally, I feel that not enough is known about LGBT history in Ireland because a lot of what you hear about LGBT history is from places like America and then even like places like India you hear more about LGBT history than in places like Ireland and I find that a lot of Irish young people don't really know anything about LGBT history and honestly modern Irish LGBT history is quite interesting it's moved quite fast and it's been very fruitful for all involved so I thought I might talk about it there will be links in the description down below to the sources of all this information and more information about all these things that happened and um, I have nine events in particular in mind from the last 40 years so let's go so sadly we have to start off depressing um, in 1982 a guy called Declan Flynn was murdered he was a gay man and he was murdered by a group of young men and um, none of these men ended up serving any jail time they didn't get any sentences and they walked free and this made a lot of people very angry it was a horrible situation um Verby Park was where he was killed I know the place quite well um and it was very emotional for me to find out that something so horrible had happened in somewhere that I found so familiar and so quaint and cute and adorable and it was just it was a very depressing thing to happen to kickstart modern LGBT history in Ireland in 1983 Ireland had its first pride parade now this was a bit more of a stonewall type pride parade than a modern type pride parade because it was more of a protest against the fact that Declan Flynn had been killed and then his killers got off and that there was um that homosexuality was a criminal act in Ireland at the time it was more of a protest than a parade but it's still referred to as Ireland's first pride parade then in 1988, um, a man called David Norris took up a case in European court against Ireland. Uh, David Norris is a senator. He was the first openly gay uh, po political official uh, elected in Ireland. Uh, he was elected in 1987 and he's still around now. He's still doing the same stuff now. And um, he's probably the one person who's been in public office for as long as I've been alive. Um, he took up a court uh, case against Ireland in the European court because he wanted to uh, get homosexuality decriminalised as a gay man himself. Um, the European court decided that, okay, having homosexuality as a criminal act was a violation of human rights and therefore petitioned Ireland to change their law. In 1993, five years later, uh, homosexuality was decriminalised in Ireland. Um, I find that weird to think about because... Uh, Jesus, uh, my parents were in a relationship at this point and um, that's only six years before I was born so like there are people that I know who would have been aware of the fact that homosexuality was a crime at one point and there are people that I would have known that I would know who were alive to see it decriminalized which is kind of like a weird thing to think about considering in my lifetime homosexuality has only ever been a legal thing in 2006, we had yet another court case, Zappone versus Revenue Commissioners. Catherine Zappone is yet another senator. She's no longer a senator, she's now a TD, which is like a member of parliament, but Irish edition. Um, Catherine Zappone took up a case against the Revenue Commissioners because Catherine Zappone, as a Canadian woman, had married her wife in Canada. And then when she moved to Ireland, she became like a political figure in Ireland and she was living here, she was a citizen, blah, blah, blah. She contacted the revenue commissioners to say, look, me and my wife are married. Can we get like uh, marriage benefits like a heterosexual couple would? And they denied her that. So she took up a case against them. And in the end, she ended up losing because to be fair, the way it was seen was that, that she had no grounds to claim these benefits because she wasn't married in Irish law. And that same-sex marriage wasn't legal in Irish law at the time so that was kind of a bit of a kickstart for the whole marriage equality movement in Ireland Um Catherine Zappone is a really nice person not only has she done a lot for marriage equality she was honestly the most vocal person about marriage equality um, that I ever saw um, during the course of the marriage referendum and she was also very vocal about gender recognition particularly for young people and she's a really nice woman I've met her more than once and honestly I could do nothing but say good things about her in 2010 and to be fair even though this is only six years ago and I was 10 at the time I don't remember it very clearly 
um, civil partnerships were brought in for same gender couples. Now civil partnerships differ from marriages. Civil partnerships are more so for people who are cohabiting but are not actually in a relationship. For example, some siblings who live together have civil partnerships. Um, some friends who live together would have civil partnerships. And you can have a civil partnership with anyone effectively. But um, they brought in civil partnership for same gender couples as well so that um, you receive a certain amount of benefits that you would get if you were married but not the full benefits that you would get from marriage so it's like a step down from marriage but a step up from not having anything um before this point nobody really talked about the whole you have civil marriages you have civil partnership why why do you need marriage thing but then after that that became a big debate and that kind of I feel stalled the whole marriage equality movement for a little while, a little while because people were busy arguing about the fact that we had civil partnerships now. 2015 was like the year of happenings in Irish LGBT history because three things happened at once. Um, Leo Varadkar became the first minister to be openly gay and um, at the time he was minister for health I think I don't think he's minister for health now he's minister for something else but he was minister for health at the time he spoke out about the fact that uh, queer men are not allowed to donate blood in Ireland either and um, it was just it was a big deal at the time because um, we had had obviously queer senators in Catherine Zappone and in uh, David Norris we had had a few queer TDs but we hadn't had any gay ministers it was a big deal and everybody was like oh my god Leo Varadkar was gay so it was everybody freaked out long story short and then slightly later in 2015 in May same-sex marriage was legalized and I'm so happy about that and um, it was a really interesting experience to have I'm so glad that I was alive and old enough to understand the whole marriage equality uh, marriage referendum at the time because I feel like it was a very interesting thing to be alive for. It was a very interesting thing to experience, especially since um, a lot of it like a lot of it like the, the LGBT youth service belonged to got quite involved in the Yes Equality campaign which is really interesting and um, I have a lot of teachers who were very into um, marriage equality and um, my Irish teacher particularly handed out these uh, Yes Equality badges that were in the Irish language um, which is Ta Coenus I think, I can't remember, I still have one somewhere but um, my school also had a fake gay marriage because we had a fake marriage referendum which passed 89-11 and um, then we had a fake gay marriage between two female teachers and two male teachers and it was very funny and it was all very light-hearted and wonderful and honestly it was just a really interesting experience especially seeing like how people reacted to no votes the fact that um my granny voted yes and the fact that like it was so tense when votes were being counted because um it was like 51 49 it barely passed but it passed and that's the point and now the most recent part of Irish LGBT history, which is really the first part where trans people come into it, weirdly enough. Um, in 2015, about two months after same-sex marriage was legalised, um, we got our first Gender Recognition Act. Um, for about 20 years before that, a woman by the name of Dr Lydia Foy had been trying to get her birth cert reissued because she's a trans woman and her birth cert said that she was male and she really wanted to get her birth cert reissued and her passport reissued so it would have the correct gender marker and um, for a while the passport office was very uh, chill about reissuing stuff but after the gender recognition certificate came through it meant that you could get all of your documents changed and um, basically how it works is you apply and you receive a gender recognition certificate and then you can use that gender recognition certificate to change other documents um sadly um for people under the age of 18 for people over the age of 18 it's really cool because you just declare your gender legally and then you are that gender that's all it's very straightforward for people over 18 and for people under 18 it's slightly different because if you're over 16 you have to get like doctor opinions and parental consent and all that kind of thing it's very it's a bit more complicated um, it's not impossible, but it's definitely not easy to do and then if you're under 16 It doesn't account for people under the age of 16 at all. I got lucky I was already 16 when it passed so it meant that I could go and seek gender recognition So I've been legally recognized as male for I'd say um, Six months at least 
and that's really good for me because I was getting to a point where I was passing and my documents would say female and then that would lead to problems for me and um, like when going on holidays and stuff so that was really good for me but um it really sucks that people under 16 can't legally recognize their gender as of yet and i believe that that is going to be the next big thing that we need to tackle in terms of lgbt rights in ireland that getting younger trans people supported better is so important because a lot of the services available to trans people in ireland really only cater to people over the age of 16 and don't really take it into account like younger people actual children younger teenagers you know it's very older the better as I already said, there's going to be links in the description down below to sources about information about all these things. And um, if you're interested in any of these things, like uh, particularly I will put stuff down about their under recognition certificates and how you can obtain one if that's a, a thing that you want to do. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button down below. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.